you another video episode of my podcast. My name is Cheryl, and this is Cappuccino Crafts, my little corner of the general interwebs and my channel on YouTube where I like to talk about knitting and crochet and books and movies and other things I'm watching and other life and chatty things that I want to share with you. Thank you very much for choosing to watch this video and spend a little bit of your time with me. I hope that you enjoy it. Please do settle in, get yourself a delicious beverage, grab your yarn, your hook, your needles, or any other crafty thing you, you're working on, and let's just have a really nice crafty chatty time. So, it is officially fall, and it's been feeling like fall. The rain has continued here in Washington State, where I live and where I'm recording from, and the rain is a good thing um, for us. And uh, but the last couple days, the clouds have cleared, and we've had a couple of really beautiful clear fall days where there's still a little bit of that coolness in the air but the the skies have been clear blue and really pretty and um i love fall it's my favorite season for many reasons i like the you know mild chill in the air i like the fall colors on the leaves I I like the coziness of getting ready for winter and um yeah all of that I I I love it and so I I hope that you're doing all right and um I wonder what or what crafts are you working on right now um I'd love to hear about it in the comments below and chat about any crafts or what you're reading or what you're doing or if you have any questions that you want to ask me that's fair too so um yeah but um it's been a rough week it has I've been emotional um I've been anxious I've been struggling and so I'm glad I made it through and the sunshine is helping a bit. I uh, went outside today um, and I went to the parking lot where I like to look at the mountain and I had a, a decaf dirty chai. It was lunchtime so I I grabbed a, a drive through lunch I got a, a decaf dirty chai and a turkey sandwich and I sat in my car and looked at the mountain and I had the car windows open for fresh air and that was good. That was a really good thing and very helpful and um, now I'm back at the house and I have gotten ready to show you how my crafting has been this week it's been it's been good first i want to show you the mystery pattern this uh the pattern is that mcal te wanua by aroha knits and i am working on the fourth and final clue which is very exciting and there are many, many stitches on the needle now. So I'm going to try and be careful when I show it to you. Also, this is your spoiler warning. If you, if you are curious about um, doing this pattern and doing it as a mystery, um, and not knowing what it's going to look like, all the way through um, then please look away for a, for a little bit for a minute or so or skip ahead 
because I'm going to show you. Here we go. Are you ready? Okay. Here we are on the fourth clue. I am maybe about half or a third of the way through. And then that's the fourth clue and the second clue and so on. Now, as I said, I'm somewhere between a third and a half way through. But I only have this much yarn left. So I might need to end it a little early. But yes, I am enjoying that. I Now I'm going to show you my crochet. This is, uh, the pattern is the blue denim scarf. And it is from DMC. Uh... They make, they make, um, crochet, cotton, and embroidery floss, and other things, and they put out this pattern. I had a little setback with this, because, yeah, I had to redo the mesh, basically, and I have finished redoing the mesh. I had gone almost to the end and then I just had a feeling that the mesh had gotten the gauge on my chain stitch for some reason. I was really loosey-goosey and I felt more and more like the, the mesh had really gotten oversized compared to the first one that I did. And it didn't match the gauge of the chain stitches I was doing here. Um, but I continued on to see how it fit and how it came together. And I just, as I kept going and I kept looking and I'm thinking, no, I really think so, I need to go back. So I did. And I even like measured, I held them together because I thought, oh, maybe it's not that big a deal. So I, I put the two mesh sections together and I was a little bit, a little bit shocked at what a big difference it was in how long, like how, yeah, it was like, two and a half centimeters or an inch longer. And I was getting close to not even being able to have enough thread to do the last repeat of this. So I'm like, ah, uh, that gauge, it took up too much thread. It's not gonna match the other mesh and I need all the thread. So I ripped out. And I have redone the mesh and it is appropriate gauge, appropriate size now. And I am reworking the thread. I still think I'm going to be coming close. So, but I think that might be the difference I need to have enough thread. Oh, I am really thirsty. I have some water here. And the only crafting left to show you is my progress on the left side now from the center circle. I am building out the left side of the Japanese garden shawl. And I love it. I just love that this is a very special, special project to me, special in its beauty, because I do just love it, but also just special in it's been so nice to work on, 
and it has good memories of the book that I read. Um, and everything. So I just really love it. Um, and here. And this is what the end looks like. This is the end of the right side. So this was all I had left to do after I showed you last week. Just this little bitty bit of the main color. So I'm doing fine with how much main color yarn I have. Uh, I had I, I weighed it again on the food scale and I had out of a hundred grams to start, I had 57 left for finishing the second side. So that is working out just great. A little over half, so it should, I should have just a little bit left over. I might make a leftover project with the, th what I have left over of each color. Maybe some mitts, some mitts for the fall, fingerless gloves. That might be a nice leftover project. Um, so that is the crafting. And now to reading. And there's something I had on my mind to talk to you about last week, um, but I just forgot to talk about it. So we're going to talk about it this week. Um, as far as like organizing and catalog cataloging books you've read or books you want to read, um, which books that you own, which books are on your wish list, and that kind of thing. Um, so many people use Goodreads, which is fine. I use Goodreads. I like Goodreads. Um, but it is a little clunky sometimes. And, you know, also Amazon. <laughs> Amazon owns Goodreads. And I have complicated feelings about Amazon. I don't always feel good about supporting them and, and um, you know, participating in the sites and the things that they own. So I have had my eyes and ears out for something that might be a good alternative to Goodreads that might be a little less clunky, uh, might, might be a little more like modern interface and more intuitive to use and maybe, you know, look a little bit nicer too, less cluttered. And so I saw Lena Norms on YouTube. She has, I think her YouTube channel is under her name, Lena Norms. I'll, anyway, I, I will spell it and put it um, on the screen somewhere for you. But she made a video called Goodreads is Dead. And she, maybe that was probably to get people's attention, but really it was about, it was about her wanting an alternative to Goodreads. And also her, she, it was an letting, letting people know of story graph and on the video she um she talked about the reasons she was not very satisfied with goodreads and why she wanted to search out something as an alternative and then she talked about story graph which is still in beta it's the site is actually beta dot story graph the story graph dot com um so it's not fully like 
it's still in beta. They're still like working on it and um, improving it and developing it. But it is at a point where people are using it and um, giving feedback and things and also just trying to build build a user base and user community. And on the video, Lena joined StoryGraph and talked about the process and then talked about what uh, her experience exploring StoryGraph a little bit was like. And you can also import all, if, if you have put a lot of books on your Goodreads and um, made a lot of lists and, and catalog and put a lot of ratings and reviews and catalog so many of the things that you've read or so many of the things that are on your on your radar to to read in the future you can import all of that um all of the books that you have saved in your goodreads and the ratings and reviews that you have you can import them into the story graph and so I'm like I am ready let's go the next day because I was kind of busy the day that I watched it but the next day I joined story graph and I immediately imported my Goodreads information and um filled out they they asked have a questionnaire so that they can make you like customized recommendations for um books that you might like to help you find books and i really like the questions that they ask and in their rating system they really de-emphasize like the the number like the star number rating which um, I think it's a really good thing. I think we've come so, like, focused in on five star, four star, and we just look at the rating and then, bah. But, um, when you, when you review a book after you finished reading it, and I've already done this for some of the books that I recently finished, when you put in a review there, um, it asks you about the character development and it asks you like what about the tone of the book and to click off different tones like dark, mysterious, tense, sad, hopeful, inspiring. Um, so you click on the tones that that you think apply for that book and um, it asks you several questions about what kind of characters are in the book and the character development and um, I, 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 I really like their approach and I am really happy that I've been exploring the story graph and I'm going to keep using it. Now, I I have not stopped using Goodreads. Right now, I'm kind of going between both of them. I don't know how long that's going to continue. Uh, we'll see how everything shakes out. Yeah. So, I thought... Um, some of you might be interested in in hearing about that and i finished three books this week fall reading is in full glory <laughs> now uh, to be fair two of those were novellas and that's okay i don't know i'm on a novella kick that didn't used to be a thing for me, but apparently right now, I, um, there is an audible, I know I was just talking about Amazon and <laughs> complicated. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still an audible member. So I haven't, uh, 
I haven't done anything about that yet and I'm not sure I will. I There's an Audible exclusive novella that was released a couple weeks ago by it's a it was a, a collaborative novella with Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinette. This novella called The Original. It's a sci-fi adventure thriller. Well, maybe not. Yeah, it's action-y. It's a sci-fi action thriller. It's really good. I enjoyed it so much. It's in kind of a dystopian future. It doesn't seem super far in the future, but very high tech. And um, yeah, it's good. And they've got cloning. Uh, what, ha what happens, the beginning, the setup, the opening is that a woman wakes up in a hospital room and she's not sure, she doesn't remember really how she got there or why she's there. And it turns out that she is a provisional clone. And she has been grown or created so that she can track down her original who they have charged and convicted already through their justice or court system. They have already convicted her of murdering her husband. And they created this clone of her with, and entered her memories from the original because you get backups of your memories so that if something happens to you, you can get a clone with recent memories um, to, to continue. But they've loaded up the original's memories. And so now she has four days for the provisional clones. They only have a lifespan of four days. And if they succeed in tracking down and executing their original for the crime that they were convicted of, then they can be allowed to become a stable clone and continue to live. And if they do not, in the four days, get fulfill that objective and capture their original, then they just will die. And that's the start. And it's, it's really good. It's really good. I really, I liked it so much. And I have never read any Brandon Sanderson. I know I like fantasy and I've not read Brandon Sanderson. Who, what? Yeah. So that's my first Sanderson and I have not read Mary Robinette either and now I want to read her Lady Astronaut. Mary Robinette wrote uh, the Lady Astronaut series. I'm not sure if the series is done yet. I think there's two or three and I don't know if three is the end or if she might be continuing. The other novella that I finished is Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto, and I loved it. Loved it so, so much. Um, and it's kind of funny, I finished it yesterday, and I finished it at, like, the very moment, the very moment that the file expired. And I thought I was on the last page, but I wanted to turn the page just to make sure that there wasn't anything more. So I went to, you know, swipe to the next page and it just said not available <laughs> in the Libby app. Yeah, I read my library books and listen to my library books in the Libby app, which I love. I love the Libby app for my library electric 
electronic or digital um, books. So it's unavailable. And I'm like, what? And then I looked at the time and I'm like, oh, because I had checked the time a couple days ago to see exactly when it expired. Because I was cutting it close. I knew it. And I'm like, oh. So I'm like, I think that was the last page. But I'm not sure if there might have been two or five or whatever, a few more pages left. So I'm like, oh no, did I finish it or not? I don't know, I don't know. So I'm like, oh, can I, can I borrow it again? And there were already people waiting for it. So I did put a hold. The first thing I did was I put another hold on it, but I knew I had to wait. And then I'm like, oh. But then I'm like, oh, maybe I can get it on Audible and I can listen to it and listen to the end and make sure I finished it all, all, all the way. So I did. I um, I had some credits to use anyway. So I used a credit to get Kitchen on Audible. I already knew I loved it. So I'm like, I definitely want to reread this in the future and I think it would be a lovely book to listen to so I was totally really happy to have an audio version of it so I got it on audible and I listened to the end and I'm like it got to the end and end and I had finished the last page the last words that she read before it went you know ding tone and then this has been the kitchen by banana yoshimoto thank you for listening um yeah so right before that ending tone and the closing message it was exactly the words that i read on the last page so that was so funny to me though if i hope you enjoyed the story <laughs> uh Anyway, so yeah, those are two of the books that I finished. The third book that I finished was, ah, why am I blanking? Oh, Ruth Ware, The Turn of the Key. I finished that because that thriller really kept me going. I'm like, I, I, it was a real page turner. Um, well, even though I listened to it in an audio format, but I just wanted to keep listening and yeah, so that was an easy one to get through and wow, surprises. There were plenty of surprises, plenty of secrets. It was like, wow, I did not see that coming. I really didn't. I really didn't. Even though looking back, I can see she set it up. I'm like, it was there. She, I, I see the crumbs that she left. It was there. But I just, I did not pay attention to those crumbs. I was too distracted. There were so many red herrings. I was too distracted by the other shiny objects. <laughs> And did not see what she was setting up. So yeah. It, um, overall, the writing was so... The prose and the writing style I loved. It was so atmospheric and really perfectly creepy. And it really blended. Because with the smart house, it was also like... A redone Victorian like that perfect like weird mashup of old Victorian manor gothic and then super slick modern and glass and stainless steel and smart home super high tech uh, it was the best of both worlds because the tech was creepy and, and weird and like 
what was what is going on why is why is this why is the house behaving this way with the technology going haywire and then the gothic ghosty creepy vibes um really worked together as and it was really well crafted like i said once i knew the surprises i'm like i see you ruth setting it up it was well crafted but i had mixed feelings ultimately about how i felt in the ending And I think over the days that have passed, I'm okay. I'm, I'm feeling it's getting a little bit better in my mind and not worse. But it, it wasn't a perfect ending for me. And I think um, some people might feel a little bit disappointed. But... Um, but yeah, it was a really good, perfect fall thriller to read. Fantastic atmosphere. Um, messed up. Very messy characters. Everybody was messed up. So, yeah, and the kids were the creepiest. The creepiest kids. Oh. Mm, yeah. So, Ruth Ware, The Turn of the Key. And now watching, watching, watching. I'm still watching and loving Lovecraft Country. This episode, I think, was it six or seven we're on right now? I can't remember the number. This was a time travel episode. And it was amazing. I think it's my favorite episode of all the ones that I've seen and I think there are three more to come I think there's a total of ten and so this would have been seven it was so far my favorite episode it was so good so so good and loving that also, in perfect time for the week, that the emotional week that I had, perfect timing, there, there is starting a new series of The Great British Baking Show on Netflix. Episode 1 is available, and I needed it. <laughs> I watched it, and I was like, yes, this is what I need. I need this right now. It's just so comforting and just, yeah, very, very comforting to watch and just upbeat and kind and fun and cozy and just it it really helped cheer me up made me feel a little bit better and help turn the day around and i am really happy for that so i love the great british baking show ever since i started watching it if like three four four i know something three four or so years ago i have loved it it is a favorite and i'm always excited for the new season to start I didn't know when it was going to because you know all the television and movie production you know has been pushed back and no idea when things are getting finished or when they will be available but yeah oh and that really made made my day made my week it was so good um, yeah, so, do you watch The Great British Baking Show? Yeah, I, I just love it so much. 
anyway so that's that I think that covers this episode so take care I hope you're doing well and that all your family and loved ones are well I hope that your crafting and creative projects are going great and and matching your vision for them and see you next time bye bye